Hello my schoolers, welcome to my school channel where we are tackling the 2018 jam pass question for chemistry. So in this clip we'll be solving questions 45 to 66. So let us start with question 45. In the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid solution, what volume of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide would exactly neutralize 10 cm cube of 1.25 molar sulfuric acid? Okay, very well. So let's present the equation of the reaction. So we are told sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. And sulfuric acid is H2SO4 plus sodium hydroxide. Okay? All aqueous. Alright, so what we are going to have is, we are going to have the salt of sodium, okay, plus water. Remember, neutralization reaction is a reaction that gives you salt and water only as the product formed. Alright, so let's see if the equation is balanced. Here we have uh, two atoms of hydrogen. We have one atom of sodium here, we have two here, so we just have to balance the equation. So the total number of hydrogen atoms we have on the reaction side, reacting side or reactant side, is two, two times one, that is two, making four in total. At the product side, we have two, so we just have to add two to this end, okay? So we have oxygen, we have two of it here, and we have four of it here, making six. So how many do we have here? We have four, we have five. So we just have to, that's why we balanced it with this two times one, that is two plus four. So the equation is balanced. So if we want to write out the uh, mole ratio, that is one ratio two, very well. So remember the formula that we use, that is CA VA over CBVB equals NA over N B. Okay, so now let's slot in our given data. Okay, so what is our CA? From the question we are told in the reaction, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid solution, what volume of 0 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide? So the concentration of sodium hydroxide, that is CB, is 0 0.5. Okay, just follow me as we pull out the values from the question. Okay, would, would exactly neutralize 10 centimeter cube of 1.25 molar. So we have VA equals 10 centimeter cube. Okay, and we have the concentration of acid as 1.25. Okay, all right, let's just neglect the, let's neglect the, the units. So that we can have more speed okay so we are now asked to look for the volume of sodium hydroxide that will neutralize 10 centimeter cube of the acid so what we don't know is the volume of the base which is unknown the number of moles of acid is one that's equals to one number of moles of the base that is two so with this, we can slot in our values and get our answer. So at first, let's make VB the subject of the formula. So what we are going to have, if we cross multiply, we'll have CB VB times NA equals CAVA times NB. Okay, so dividing both sides by CB and A. Remember, we are looking for VB, the volume of the base. So this is struck out, so we have CB times NA, okay? So this is the formula for VB. So let's put in our values together. So we have VB will be equals to CA is 1.25, okay? Times VA, that is 10, okay? Times NB, which is 2 over CB, which is from the values we've pulled out, which is 0 0.5, okay, times NA, which is 1. Very well. So what we have is 
1.25 times 10 that will give you 12.5 12.5 times 2 that gives you 25 so we have 25 over 0 0.5 times 1 that is still 0 0.5 so 25 divided by 0 0.5 that gives you 50 so remember we are working with volume and that is 50 cm cube so if we scan through our options together let's see which option carry 50 cm cube and that is option d so option d is very correct so here we have question 46 to what volume must 300 cm cube of 0 0.60 mole of sodium hydroxide solution be diluted to give you 0 0.40 molar solution okay so that is very easy to tackle so we are just going to use the principle of dilution or the law of dilution which is initial concentration times initial volume equals to final concentration okay times the final volume okay so from the question we see that the initial concentration is 0 0.60 times the initial volume which is 300 equals the final concentration which is 0 0.40 Okay, times you are asked to look for the final volume. What do we do? We divide both sides by the final volume. Okay. So just to make this easier for clarity's sake, this means 60 over 100, right? Times 300 over 1 divided by 40 over 100. Just for simplicity, okay, without calculator. So that is 60 over 100 times 300 over 1 times 100 over 40. So 100 strikes out 100, 0, 1, 0, 0 strikes out 0, okay? So we have 4 year 1, 4 year 15. So what we have left is 15 times 30, and that gives us 450 cm. So let's counter our options together. Option A is very correct. Question 47. Diamond is a bad conductor of electricity because its bonding electrons are used in what? Okay, first you have to know that diamond is a good conductor of heat because heat does not require electron to flow. So, but the giant uh, structure that diamond is, it doesn't allow for the conduction of electricity because this requires the movement or the free movement of electrons so diamond is a giant covalent structure and covalent bonding does not allow for good conductivity of electricity so we are wrapping it up by saying that diamond is a bad conductor of electricity because its bonding electrons are used in option b covalent bond formation Remember that the link in the description below has been provided just for you so you can be taken to the My School website where you'll be giving further instructions on how you can get the My School mobile app or download the My School software. Okay, so this is to enable you prepare properly for your coming exam. So let's tackle question number 48. The reaction between an alkanoic acid and an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst is known as what this process is known as esterification or for proper naming you can say fissure esterification where an ester is formed when a carboxylic acid or an organic acid reacts with an alcohol mostly the kind of acid catalyst they use is uh, it can be conk um, h2so4 or dry hydro hydrogen chloride um, gas okay that's the acid catalyst that they tend to use most times so the correct answer is esterification what is saponification that is the making of soap okay through the conversion of um, fat oil or lipids okay into to form soap okay dehydration is the removal of water while hydrolysis is the breaking down of polymers into monomers if you look at the esterification reaction okay it's a forward reaction it's it's a it's a kind of reversible reaction whereby the forward process gives you esters through the esterification process the other side 
the backward reaction, that is the reaction of hydrolysis, where the ester is being broken down back into the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. So, to summarize our answer and our explanation, we can say that the reaction between an organic acid or a carboxylic acid and an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst like H2SO4 or dry ACL gas, okay, is known as esterification, option C. So do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as our videos have been uploaded. So we have question 49. The constituents common to duralumin and alnico is what? Okay, at first let's look at the constituents or some of the constituents of duralumin. We have uh, aluminium, we have manganese, we have copper, we have magnesium and um some what have you okay then for how nickel we have aluminium we have nickel we have cobalt okay we also have um we have iron we have niobium as part of the component element or the constituent so when we look at the constituent that are common to duralumin and our nickel it is aluminium and copper but copper is not here but we have aluminium that is present so option c is very correct the constituent element common to duralumin and our nickel you can see it's a l a l that is aluminium option c is very correct so we have question number 50 the solubility of the solid that dissolves in a given solvent with the liberation of it will do what okay at first once it is liberated to the environment, that tells you an exothermic reaction. And increase in temperature in the system, okay, in an exothermic reaction, that favors the left-hand side, that is the reactant part of the entire reaction, okay? So that makes the reaction slower. But when you decrease temperature in an exothermic reaction, it favors the forward reaction or the right side of the reaction, which is product formation. So talking about solubility here, yeah, we are going to see, so let's just take the question together and pick the answer based on the explanation I've just shared. The solubility of the solid that dissolves in a given solvent, okay, with the liberation of it will decrease with an increase in temperature because liberating it shows an exothermic reaction. So it's going to decrease, it's going to get slower with an increase in temperature. So option B is very correct. Remember, as we are solving these questions, you can ask your questions right now, okay? Just use the link in the description below that takes you to the My School website where several solution providers are waiting to help you out. So, let's tackle question number 51. What mass of copper will be produced by the cathodic reduction of copper to ion when 1.60 ampere of current, okay? passes through a solution of copper tetrahydrate of a 6 for 1 R. So given uh, 1 Faraday equals to 96500 and molecular mass of copper here is 64. So now let's solve this. So recall that M under electrolysis, M equals to ZIC. Okay, where Z is the electrochemical equivalent and Z is still equals to the molecular mass, okay? over number of Faraday, the Coulomb of charge required. Alright, so we can see that the molecular mass of copper we are dealing with here is 64 over number of Faraday, we have copper 2 aeon. So one mole of electron discharges one mole of copper. Okay, so we are going to require two moles of electron to discharge two moles of copper 2 aeon. Okay, so that is two times nine six five hundred okay so two times this all right so now let's plot this thing into our equation so we have m the mass equals to this 64 over two times nine six five hundred okay times this, uh, the high there the current is 1.60 1.60 that thing means eight over five or for clarity's sake, let me just say use 1.60. Okay, we are now told for one hour. For one hour. So one hour is 60 seconds make one minute. 60 minutes make one hour. So that is 60 
times 16 and that is 3600 okay this is over 1 over 1 so by the time we multiply 64 times this times this divided by this what we are going to have roughly should be 1.9 something something but i can just approximate it to one since we are dealing with mass that will be in gram so that is our answer very simple to tackle so let's count our options realize that option c is very correct perhaps you have better steps or explanations to any of the questions we have tackled so far please would like to know just use the comment section below indicate the question number and the solutions you would like to share question 52 calculate the ph of 0.5 mole per dm cube of h2so4 okay this is very simple Re uh, recall that um ph okay the ph scale equals minus log all right of h plus okay let's use the square bracket for specificity to be specific about the metrics we are using okay so this is what we have and recall that when it comes to h2so4 when you dissociate it what you are going to have is two moles of hydrogen ion, okay, plus SO4 two minus, okay. So if that is it, that will be two times the value of what we have here, and we have it as 0 0.05. Remember that this square bracket means that the concentration is a mole per dm cube. So we're having two moles of this. So that will be two times 0 0.05, okay. Where is 0 0.05 actually means? 2 times 5 over 100 isn't it so 2 times 5 that is 10 okay that is 10 over 100 0 strikes out 0 we have 1 over 10 okay 1 over 10 1 over 10 or 0 0.1 whichever one we want to use so we can slot in this value to this place so we have our ph equals minus log open the brackets okay 0 0.1 or 1 over 10 whatever value we want to use so pH equals minus log where 1 over 10 means 10 raised to power minus 1 you can see your mathematical skill is coming into play in chemistry right now they are so interwoven okay so this implies this minus 1 comes here so we have pH min equals to minus into brackets the minus 1 then we have log then we have 10 so recall that this is base 10 so log 10 base 10 that is still 1 times minus times minus that gives you plus that is equals to 1 so 1 times 1 that means the pH is 1 okay so let's count our options together option C is very correct so we have question 53 the choice of method for extracting a metal from its ore depends on what? Option B. Depends on the position of the metal in the electrochemical series or in the activity series. Remember that if you want to extract metal, you can by burning it in air, okay, or eating with air, uh, burning it or eating it with carbon, or by electrolysis. And if you recall the functions of electrolysis or the importance of electrolysis, one of them is extraction of metals, okay, purification of metals, electroplating of one metal with another, and the making of certain compounds. So, for you to consider electrolysis, we are talking about the electrochemical series or the activity series. So, in summary of the explanation we just shared, you can see that the choice of method for extracting a metal from its ore depends on the position of the metal in the electrochemical series when you compare it to carbon or hydrogen. So, option B is very correct. Remember that the link in the description below is made available so you can get the MySchool software or purchase the MySchool mobile app. Just click on the link. It takes you to the MySchool website where you'll be given further instructions to get any of these tools so that you can better prepare for your coming exam. So, let's tackle question 54. Which of the following produces relatively few ions in solution? So just take note of this. Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, they are very soluble in water. Okay, so aluminum hydroxide is insoluble in water. So coming back to 
calcium hydroxide okay it is slightly soluble in water take note of slightly soluble okay and it's uh it's it becomes soluble in water the solubility in water decreases as you increase temperature and that gives you lime water so going back to the context of the question which of the following produces relatively few ions so we are going to go for calcium hydroxide that makes option b very correct so you just have to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as we release the next video so we have question 55 so we have this diagram i don't know how well this this diagram is clear to us but um, looking at this the figure above shows the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride okay so remember in sodium chloride um, the electrolysis okay we have the cathode and the anode the cathode is for the cations okay which is for sodium and the anode is for the chlorine or the chloride ions okay so if we can see this this is the sodium ion the cations that moves towards the cathode so this is the cathode and this makes the anode so we are told that the chloride ions move towards the anode okay where they are oxidized so z is is the anode where the chlorine ion or the chloride ion have been oxidized that's just for emphasis so let's count our options and answer the question the figure above shows the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride z is the anode where the chloride ion are oxidized so option a is very correct the knowledge of half-life can be used to do what okay so at first half-life is a given amount of time that a substance will require to get reduced by half okay due to decay and their radiations their radiative uh, emissions in the process so when that occurs radiation is given and most times a new kind of atom or nucleus or element in general is being formed in that process so the closest to what we have regarding the knowledge of half-life is creating an element so option a is very correct question 57 an element x forms the following compounds with chlorine okay so we have xcl4 xcl3 xcl2 this illustrates the law of multiple proportion okay which says that when two elements when they combine together and in their combination they can form more than one chemical compound okay so it shows that the various masses of one element that is combining with a fixed mass of a particular element they do so just in simple ratio this is just a paraphrase of the entire um, law of multiple proportion so this reflects that you can see element x is having just a fixed mass why the element chlorine okay is having various masses and you can see that their combination is just in simple ratio okay so that confirms the law of multiple proportions so option a is very correct remember that you can ask your questions right now using the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website where the army of solution providers are waiting for you so let's start with question 58 the hydrogen ion concentration of a sample of orange juice okay is 2.0 times 10 raised to power minus 11 mole per dm cube what is the poh okay so let's just go by the context of this question would have loved to make some adjustments but let's just go by the context of the question and profile solution okay so let's just do this so recall that pH plus POH, okay, equals 14, scale of 14, okay? So, and um, the pH from this question, remember the formula, okay, is 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 11. So, when we use the law of indices that we've known of, okay, or logarithm, logarithm and indices in this aspect, so that would just be, we are going to split this, that would be log okay this is 2.0 2.0 where the times changes to plus okay let's just leave it like this times log minus log base 10 raised to power 10 this 10 here minus 11. so this is just the splitting of the brackets here okay so ph equals 
we had uh, log base 10 raised to the power 2, okay, it's 0 0.3010, that is 0 0.3010, the time changes to plus, okay, minus log, okay, so recall that this minus 11 comes here, so we have this minus here, into brackets, the minus 11, okay, then we have log raised to the power 10, okay. So, we have pH equals minus 0 0.3010, okay? Minus times minus, that is plus, okay? That is plus times plus, that is still plus. 11 times log base 10 raised to power 10, that is 1. So, 1 times 11, that is still 11, okay? So, this is 11 minus this. This should give you 10.7, whatever, and the value goes on like that. So, we are going to recall that... POH plus pH equals to 14. So let's plot in the value of pH here. So that will be pH is 10.7 plus POH, which we are looking for. Let me just write it out in full, okay? POH equals 14. So what do we do? We send 10.7 to the other side and it becomes negative. So that implies that POH equals 14 minus 10. Point seven, and that gives you 3.3 .3. all right so let's counter our options together option a is very correct perhaps you have better explanations to any of the topics we've tackled so far or any of the numbers of questions that we have solved so far please indicate the question number and the solutions you would like to share using the comment section below okay so let's tackle question 59 so given the sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to give you sulfur trioxide, okay? So we have the enthalpy of the reaction as being exothermic, it's negative, okay? That is minus, so this is an exothermic reaction. So now let's go to the question. In the equation above, an increase in temperature will shift the equilibrium position to the where, okay? So at first we have identified this is an exothermic reaction so increasing temperature in an exothermic reaction slows the reaction okay and shifts the equilibrium position to the left that is to the reactant side okay and that will cause a corresponding decrease in the equilibrium constant so let's rephrase it together increasing temperature in an exothermic reaction shifts the equilibrium position to the left okay and a decrease in the equilibrium constant so which option fits this explanation so let's say option a the equilibrium position to the left and the equilibrium constant decreases so option a is very correct so we have question 60 the end product of burning a candle in the atmosphere are water and what okay so burning a candle in the atmosphere that is oxygen usually the fuel used in this combustion reaction they are the candle wax, okay, the candle wick and oxygen to give you products of water vapor and carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide. So scanning through our option, option C is very correct. The end product of burning a candle in the atmosphere are water, water vapor and carbon four oxide. So option C is correct. Question 61. The collision theory explains reaction rates in terms of what? That's the frequency of collision of the reactant, okay, which give rise to products. So that's why most times when you increase the temperature of the system for a solid, okay, it's, yeah, it makes the particles of the reactant to gain more kinetic energy and more collision occurs. They break the bonds, intermolecular attraction holding them down and products are being formed, okay. So basically we are saying option B is correct. The collision theory explains reaction rates in terms of frequency of collision of the reactant. So we have question 62. The presence of ammonia gas in a desiccator can exclusively okay, be removed by what? Okay, so at first the desiccator is used to remove traces of water okay, from an almost dry sample. Okay, so exclusively that will be H2SO4, concentrated sulfuric acid okay so that is option d option d is very correct question 63 
Aluminium does not react with either dilute or concentrated trouser nitric fiber acid because of what? Okay, so at first notice that aluminium doesn't even react at all with nitric acid. It only reacts with very dilute nitric acid, okay, to actually form an impervious layer of aluminium oxide. That is, an insoluble oxide is formed on its surface, which renders it passive. Okay, that makes option D very correct. So we have question 64. Which of these sources of water may likely contain the least concentration of calcium ion and magnesium ion? Okay, so looking at all of this, sea water is hard water, okay? Tap water is hard water, okay? River water, hard water. Spring water from its source contain um, least amount of the calcium ion or the magnesium ion concentration. So the best option that we have here is option A. So we have question 65. The conductivity of an acid solution depends on what? It depends on the amount of ions present, okay, in that solution because this allows for the passage of current or the free flow of current. So option A is very correct. The amount of ions present and their mobility. So we've come to the end of this segment, but there is still more to come. So you just have to hit the like button, click on subscribe button and tap on bell notification so that this sort of content that you are enjoying can be uploaded and you'll be informed as they are released.